Hey, what's up, everybody? BDO44 coming at you another video. All right, it's a few things to talk about in the NBA. First thing, Michael Jordan is done messing around with the Hornets. He has owned this team for a good 20 years or something like that. He's tired of it, man. He is tired of it. From what I understand, he's about to sell the majority ownership to the Charlotte Hornets to somebody, Atlanta, some type of group. He's really in serious engagements to move on from that. I knew that that could be possible. Because he's just looking from the outside, he looked like he's taking a heck of a loss. Not just talking on the basketball court, but the team ain't really been doing that great. They ain't. Michael Jordan is one of the worst in terms of uh, owners, in terms of uh, drafting players. Okay, when he first got the team, every year they they wanted to get someone that was against the consensus, doubling down the same position. Just a whole lot of bad man. Everybody who watched the Bobcats, you know, after Michael Jordan had purchased the team, you understood that they weren't doing a whole lot of good there. They'd get some players here and there. Kimball Walker had a really nice tenure there. But they didn't, you know, they draft bad, man. They just draft bad. And and that's what it really came down to. Him drafting bad so much just left him in a position that the team ain't nearly as good. And it's hard to get free agents because it's Charlotte and you know, he's just behind the eight ball. And in this whole situation with LaMelo Ball's injury, I don't know if, the, you know, when stuff like this is going on, you don't know when negotiations started. For all I know, he started talking about selling the team before LaMelo went down. But I just think the accumulation of everything, including LaMelo's injury, Bridges' situation, and it going so south, you know, it's just time. I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think he can win a championship there. I don't think he can dig that team out of a hole not necessarily i don't know who's going to be able to but they just need a fresh new face a fresh new look and somebody who has a different vision in my humble opinion and mike last time we saw him at the end of the bench he just dropped his head and 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 usually when i see stuff like that it may be nothing but sometimes it's something that they want us to see and I, I just wondered if that was something Michael wanted us to see. His frustration on the end of the bench, dropping his head as the team was down by 20. In my mind, that was like the first hint that this was coming. And so that's what I'm looking at. I think that, that, that is, it's over for Mike in, in, in Charlotte. I don't know how Charlotte fans should feel about that. I don't know how the Charlotte team should feel about that. I don't know. Um but if I were a Charlotte fan, I, I would be ready to move on. <laughs> I'd have been tired after we drafted uh, six, seven years ago. Who, whatever, whoever it was, it was always somebody that had no business draft. So that's really what it comes down to, man. Um, I'm, I'm actually looking forward to see what Michael does next. If he wants to get back in ownership somehow, I would be surprised if he wants to get a part of a bigger team with a bigger uh, market. But I don't know if anybody would be super intrigued about adding Michael Jordan to the ownership team, given how bad things went with Charlotte. I just don't, I don't know. So that's the first news. Charlotte's going to be moving on from their ownership. The GOAT Michael Jordan. All right, next move uh, we talk about, I guess, is a quick update. Uh, the Lakers have made it clear that they're not interested in pursuing Kyrie Irving. Um, it's tricky to me. I don't really know how, how best to kind of view the news because I'm wondering why that's coming out right now I don't think it really holds a whole lot of merit for the media to be talking about who the Lakers are not interested in um, especially given the fact that we just lost to the Rockets we don't need to be talking about who we don't want to bring in if anything we can talk about who we do but you know looking at the circumstances those who are paying attention to the Lakers situation obviously that bag is going to D'Lo that's really what it comes down to uh, Essentially, the Lakers are making it known to us that they are interested in re-signing D'Lo. Now, the question is, is that not misguided in the sense that you don't need to be letting people know what your negotiation processes will be with big free agents? You don't need to get this to me. And I don't know. I don't know. But I'm just saying just based on what it is I've been looking at, this just looks like another punch in the face of Kyrie Irving. This don't serve no purpose other than deter Kyrie Irving from what it is that people think he wants, which is to be a Laker. I don't think it really serves any other purpose. Because it doesn't help us in negotiations with, with D'Lo, not from a Laker perspective, because what you're essentially doing is saying, okay, D'Lo, the ball is in your court. We really, really want you. Now run the price up high so we can negotiate with you and pay you more than we want to. That's all you're doing is telling both Kyrie's representation and D'Lo's representation that D'Lo is the guy you want to sign. So if I'm D'Lo, I'm running the price up. All right, cool. <laughs> Y'all want me? 
Perfect. $30 million a season. Let's start there. You know what I mean? Not to say that that's the number he's going to call for because I, I don't believe it is. But when you throw your leverage away, <laughs> telling everybody, hey, we, we have our ideas of what we want to do and we don't want to go after Kyrie Irving, that will serve you. You want to keep Kyrie Irving in the fold because he's somebody you could throw leverage off of in regard. You can play him off of, of D'Angelo Russell and help your situation if you want to keep D'Lo. So clearly, clearly, this does not necessarily appear to benefit <laughs> The Lakers by releasing this information, but when the Lakers are not even signing a center to a 10 day to complete their winning situation, it tells me that they're focused on things that they shouldn't be focused on. So the fact that they've been going back and forth about Kyrie Irving, the fact that they brought in Myers Leonard, that whole situation and what he was accused of and what Kyrie was accused of, all of it just speaks to a lack of priority being uh, placed on what it is the Lakers' best interest is versus whatever the overall, I guess, intention is toward Kyrie Irving. <laughs> Honestly, I just feel like this is, and I don't know. Like, truly, I don't know because I think I'm looking at it a certain way. But I guess I don't know how else to look at it when you see what was just gone down, what just went down with Kyrie Irving. The whole last year, if you look at the cumulative last year look at everything and then you look at this report it's just like this is just them yet again punishing Kyrie for disrespecting whoever he disrespected this is see Kyrie Irving you're not going to get a chance to be with the Lakers you're stuck in Dallas next to Luka Doncic or you're gonna have to find a way to get something anything other than what you want that's all this is I'm telling you that's all it is because it doesn't seem to serve any other purpose <laughs> other than to just deter Kyrie Irving from thinking he's gonna get what he wants so that's exactly how I look at that. If we want to keep D'Lo, we definitely don't want to tell everybody that we're going to give him his bag and that we're not interested in another player who could play the same position at the same price. That's not good negotiation processing, Lakers. But I'm not sure that even came from us, to be honest with you. I'm not sure. <laughs> but I don't think it serves us any positive purpose at all. And I'll tell you right now, Kyrie Irving is not the player you should be telling everybody you don't want. <laughs> Because he's literally the maybe arguably the best skilled player in the history of the sport. Kobe Bryant's up there, obviously, with the footwork, we know. But when it comes down to the effortless skill set and art, artistry of a guy like Kyrie Irving, you're not going to duplicate that. You're not going to find anyone else on the planet that can do what he does. And you're not going to find anybody who plays basketball who's not going to tell you the same thing I just said. So that includes D'Angelo Russell. Now, for me, I like D'Lo's age. I like his length. And I like what he could possibly do for us in terms of rebounding the ball a little more than Kai. I like his ability to shoot the ball, and I like him for us. Based on our timeline, based on the fit with Braun, all of those things are independent of anybody else. And when I tell you guys that I want to keep D'Angelo Russell and not looking to replace him with anybody, that does include Kyrie Irving because I truly believe he's a better fit for our team as of right now. But that doesn't necessarily mean that we're going to strike it hot with D'Angelo Russell because if he does what I think he's going to do, he's going to ask for more money than he's worth. As to which we're not going to want to pay that. And then we're going to be out on D'Lo. And you know who else we're going to be out on? Kyrie Irving. Because we already told everybody we're out on Kyrie Irving. And that would have then been a mistake. Because now you can't sign Kyrie in place of D'Lo. You out of both of them. You going to bring back Shooter? See, these are the type of things that I think our organization, if we did come out with this information, the day after they decided not to run a center against the Houston Rockets got beat by a 16-win team. And this is the information that comes out the next day. It just it, it, it is one and the same, making bad organizational decisions that don't help themselves. So if this came from the Lakers and their intention is to further pour it on the Kyrie Irving at the expense of their very own negotiation process, it just speaks to the loser mentality that I've been speaking about in regards to my organization. You want to tell the whole world that you don't want one of the greatest skilled players in the history of the sport and you think you're supposed to be celebrating for that. No, no, you're an idiot. Anybody in their right mind should want Kyrie Irving on their basketball team if they're trying to win basketball games. Let's make that very clear. If you don't want Kyrie Irving, there's obviously something wrong with your assessment of what basketball is about because he's one of the greatest to ever do it. So that's right there to me. It's like, all right, do I have good reasons why I want D'Angelo Russell on my team? Of course. Do I have a good reason why I wouldn't bring in the artistry of Kyrie Irving? Hell no. None of us do. So stop playing around with his value that's what I got to say to the NBA, not just the Lakers. Everybody, stop playing with that man's value. If you don't want him, cool. But don't go around telling everybody you don't want him like that's supposed to be something you celebrated for. You're an idiot. He's one of the greatest, period. 
So that's what I have to say about that. Um, moving on from that, <laughs> more, more conversation has been said about the Lakers since we're talking about the Lakers and keep talking about the Lakers. Um, you know, it is what it is. We didn't get ourselves a center and the media is confused. <laughs> and, you know, I, I tend to listen to the local guys and listen to the, to the YouTube streets as it pertains to the, to the Lakers more so than I listen to the big dogs these days. Um, so I didn't really have an intention to, or, or not intention, but rather an uh, anticipation of what they were going to think of this Rockets game. I thought it was a chance they may not even think too much of this game or that they weren't reading it the way that I did. But no, they were. <laughs> Everybody saw it the same way, that you don't take the Rockets for granted or think that they're not going to compete right now. Anybody that's paid attention to the NBA close enough has been watching and seeing the Rockets put up good performances, whether they win or lose as of the last two weeks. They've been playing very well. So it's like if you did even a remote amount of homework, you would have known that a schematic disadvantage against this particular roster on this particular night was going to lead to a particular type of loser. And we just waltz right into that situation, understanding that having not helped ourselves to anything but a scheduled loss. And that's all I'll, re- I'll allow myself to assess that game as. It's a scheduled loss by our organization. Because they did not make sure that they had everything they needed to compete against the team in front of them. And you can't blame the coach, even though you definitely will, for his decisions within that limited space. You definitely can't blame the players, even though you will, because of the fact that they just weren't able to get it done. And that's just how people look at the game. But the reality is if you're not tall enough and all those other different elements are not in place, um, you're at a, a, a severe disadvantage. And when that team just happens to be very, very talented for which the Rockets happen to be, despite their record, uh, they're going to be able to, to win one of those rare games against you where they actually get to take the cuffs off of themselves and play for real. And for professionals who are trying to vie for positioning in negotiation stuff, we just talked about Kyrie and, and, and the process and the games that people play trying to give – trying to – trying to keep from paying people it's very important that teams that are tanking when the cuffs get taken off of that team that they go out there and show that they're competent and that they're talented not only that they can do special stuff but they can have winning intangibles and can actually contribute to a winning process so not only was it incumbent for the los angeles lakers to respect that but you gotta god dang be aware of it at least (laughs) you got to be aware that a tanking team for me, it just looks like the Lakers are looking at things and they're not looking at it in detail. It's like glancing at something without actually picking it up to see what's on the front and the back of it. They're just looking at it. Oh, that looks pretty good and just move on. That's kind of how the Lakers are doing this. It's like they're not too detail oriented. They're looking around it. They're looking at it. Does it look pretty good? That's close enough. Is, is it real money? I don't know, but it looks like it's all there. So let's just zip up the bag and go home. Like, that's how the Lakers are kind of acting right now. And it's like, yo, if you don't pick up one of them stacks and see if all the money's there, if you don't get underneath that thing and make sure that ain't a box of rocks, a bag of rocks, rather, and make sure all your money's there, it's the Lakers not making sure all the money's there, so to speak. You know, <laughs> thinking that everything's going to be fine just because that team's tanking. So they're going to lose. It's like, no, that team needs to be taking a look at to see what they've been doing these last couple games. And that will determine whether or not you think they're going to lose. Not just the overall environment for which teams are tanking. So therefore, you're going to win. Do you have any idea how much you're neglecting when you look at things that way? Do you are you are you even aware how much you leave open to get go wrong? And for me, it's like. I just don't think. That the people who have normally been in place, who pay attention to the Lakers, and I'm talking about Jeannie Buss herself, who's been here since she was a little kid. This speaks to her not being involved. That's what that speaks to. Because even though she's kind of like someone who's new to the game, she's still somebody who grew up next to her father who was just the best at it, man. So she knows, and she's been around Magic Johnson her whole life. And everybody else in that Laker organization, she's been next to her whole life. If she were involved, her experience around the game alone would have helped her make better decisions than what we're seeing right now. I'm telling you, man, she's not there. And I know it. I know it. I was listening to people talk about, oh, uh, I think it was Elder who I was listening to 
the same conversation I was referencing earlier. He was talking about how he thinks as long as Jeannie Buss is in control of the Lakers, we're going to suck. We're going to be inept because she doesn't know what she's doing. I don't believe that for one second. Why? Because when she was intent on turning this thing around, it got turned around. When she was intent on things getting better, they did. When she was involved in making sure the Lakers had what they need, changes were made rather quickly. Big changes were made and great people were replaced with uh, great people replaced people who weren't as great. That's what you saw. You saw an influx of influx of greatness come into your organization rather quickly. And I just think that she thinks she did her job. Personal things have turned around her life. She got a new husband and stuff. She's not there. She's trusting people who are there to be able to look at things and dig up underneath stuff and make sure that every dollar is there. And to be honest with you, what I'm seeing is them people not doing that. <laughs> the people she hired to check to see if all the money was in the bag are kind of just looking at the bag, grabbing it, holding the weight. See, it's cool. It's good enough. And I think if my speculation is, is right, which it is wild speculation, but it's just speculation. If my speculation is right, then I don't think they would do that with their own money. Put it like that. I don't think they would do that with their own bag of money. If, if their bag came to them and they had to figure out if everything was real inside of it, I'm pretty sure they'd lift every single thing there and make sure every coin and every dollar is foldable. So for me, I don't like it. I think people are taking advantage of a moment, uh, opportunity while Jeannie's away to half do the job. And I just think that's what we're seeing. Because detail oriented people aren't going to do so much to get in place to be so good and neglect the little things that help them be good enough to make that make sense. That tells me somebody else is taking care of the money that was spent because they don't have enough care for the money being spent properly. And the person who spent that money ain't going to feel that way. You feel me? Tell me what I'm saying doesn't make all the sense in the world, bro. Why are you going to make all the trades necessary to get better? And then when you have only 13 games left and you're, behind, you're trying to fight for playoff positioning with like eight other teams, you're going to walk into a game you're expected to automatically win based on the records and not have enough to do so? And that's supposed to be acceptable? To who? Not these fans. Not those players. I cannot imagine it would be acceptable to the person who's actually writing the checks because that's her money being thrown away. And as I said, if I'm investing in something, I want to see it succeed. I'm not going to invest 90% of what the intended investment request would be and then say, nah, the 10% that's left is not worth it. Why the hell I walk into the investment in the first place? Well, I know what happens. If you're going to assess things this way, this is what happens. The person who invested the money is focused to a point and then they walk away and trust somebody else. And that person, that person doesn't take care of their business. That's what happens there. That's how you get to this, if you ask me. That's the, that's the only logical thing. Because ain't nobody in their right mind going to invest 90% of something and they say 10% left. Knowing the facts of how much they need that 10%. Knowing how much they need that 10% saying, nah, the 90% was worth investment, but I'm not giving them a coin more. So let's let that 90% fail. Why the hell I put the 90% in? I could take that 90% and put it somewhere else. That's not going to fail. You feel me? That's not going to be as expensive of an investment if that's such a problem. So none of that, none of this adds up unless Jeannie trusted somebody who ain't being thorough. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. So that's what I think. I, this comes back to me saying there's, a, there's a, a, a loser mentality permeating throughout the organization. Somebody's voice is trash. I don't know who it is. I'm not going to assume... I don't even know who all the voices are, but somebody in there is either a Trojan horse, don't know what they're doing, or that's it. It's one or the other. Either they're in there to sabotage what we're doing and people really trust them and shouldn't, or they don't know what the hell they're doing and people really trust them and they shouldn't. Either way, one of them voices is telling us to do the wrong things. I'll tell you right now. One of them voices ain't, ain't weighing the bag properly, and they're letting bricks come in instead of freaking dollars. So that's what's happening, Eugenia. I hope you're paying attention, man. I hope you're paying attention. I hope you're not too far in the clouds in, in happy life that you allowing your reputation to go down the toilet as an owner. Because that's exactly what's happening. That's exactly what's happening. And like I said, you can make a trade 
but you ain't fooled nobody. We know you went shopping for next year. That's what Jeannie needs to understand. We know you didn't make these trades just for this season. You could have very well made these trades without even intending to bring back LeBron James and Anthony Davis, and this would be the core that you bring a new superstar in for next season. See, none of this is lost upon me now that I've heard certain conversations. But my thing is, I don't care about that because we have a chance to win. And let me tell you something. Those players, as I told y'all, I, I, I mentioned that D'Lo avoided a serious back injury potentially when Alperin Sangoon was able to get away with leaning on his back. That's an injury to a player that I would say has injury concerns. We don't want nobody leaning on D'Lo's back. Why is he boxing out a center? And why isn't that center being called for a foul on that? But that's, those are two different things. But the point is, these are the things that make me wonder. While we're sitting up here saying, oh, we, we're gonna, we don't want Kyrie or we're going to pay D'Lo. This is the type of thing make me wonder if D'Lo going to be like, yeah, but I'm cool on y'all because y'all idiots. We got five more minutes left in our season and y'all weren't even decent enough to get me a freaking center. Like these are the type of things he has to wonder, like, okay, I could take their bag, but at the end of the day, when Braun ain't here with 88 AD, whatever happens there, and I'm left here, are these people gonna be still making these stupid decisions that are gonna ultimately leave me in a position to not have enough? Make my year three and my year four trash because they ain't on top of stuff and they don't care anymore because Braun's gone. These are the type of things you gotta think about if you're Vanderbilt as well. He's sitting up here telling the media, hey, we only got a couple minutes left. We are running out of time. These things matter to these guys. He's been playing in Utah all season. They may make the playoffs. He got traded to this team. He's supposed to be making the playoffs, and they ain't doing what they need to do to give him enough front court help so he can do his job properly. And hey, you think he's going to want to resign with you? You sure? You sure he's going to want to resign? You sure D'Lo just going to automatically come back to you and not take a bag somewhere else? Y'all making bad organizational decisions that leave players at a disadvantage. People are talking, saying words like malpractice. In regard to the Rockets game because y'all left him without a center. And y'all just so arrogant as to think you could beat a Rockets team that you ain't did homework on. You're so arrogant to think that you're going to resign these players that you all traded for. These guys may go somewhere else because of this. That's what I want the Lakers to understand. All the stupid stuff y'all doing ain't harmless. Just like we said about the first half of mistakes y'all make. This this is the type of stuff that tells players that you're not competent enough to make good decisions around them. So they would be wise to go somewhere else. That's all you telling me. If I'm a Laker front on free agent, bro, Lonnie Walker, I want out of here. Y'all ain't paying me right. Playing me right. Thomas Bryant already asked for out of here. He, he said he wanted out. Patrick Beverly was getting all the minutes in the world and told everybody he wanted out. Why the hell would he want out? I'll tell you why these people want out. Because they know common sense is not frequent in this place. They know this team ain't serious about winning this season. They know that when it really comes down to it, people's priorities was getting LeBron to the ultimate high for scoring this season. And after that, it was about getting Powell up in the rafters. And after that, it was about God knows what, because it sure ain't about winning when we go into the Rockets arena without a center. And let Alperin Sangoon and, and Jabari Smith torch us. So as far as I'm concerned, this team is still on that loser stuff. We did a fantastic job putting together a roster, but that seemed like that was just Rob. They finally let Rob do what he wanted to do, and he was able to show everybody he was not a part of that stupidity. Now they're back to doing the same old stuff that has nothing to do with Rob, it seems. Stuff that had to do with the Knights of the Round Table. Choosing not to pay attention to stuff that matters. Choosing not to take the money seriously that Jeannie put on the table. Make sure that every coin is spent properly, making sure everything is supposed to be well represented. None of that is happening. You don't want to bring a center in, but you're going to talk about y'all serious about health and then leave every player on the floor to go up against players bigger than them. Salute the Kobe minute. But this is the type of stuff, man. It's like you do understand how that correlates with bad health while you're sitting here saying that you want to rest a player. You're going to rest a player who ain't feeling bad, who, who ain't feeling no pain. And then you're going to proceed to let the guys who are out there get leaned on by 270 pound centers. All it takes a couple extra dollars to pay a center so you don't have that problem. But nah, you don't see the correlation between your health and this decision as a team. It's just stupidity, man. That's all it is. I don't know how else to put it. People are being stupid, getting the, the wrong result that comes with it. Small ball all year long. It's just a reflection of the same thing. Small ball last year, having it fail so bra badly and then proceeding to use it again this year. Stupid stuff. What are we on? Pills, people? Seriously. Let me know. Are we on pills? 
This is what I call pill behavior. When people don't protect themselves, when they just do all kinds of weird stuff that leaves them vulnerable, even though they're very cognizant that they're speaking clearly and all that, that they still just do whatever, right? It's pill behavior because that part of your brain that helps you be afraid of whatever it is that would go wrong is just not there. The, the pills have drowned that out. That's what the Lakers are acting like. I deal with pills or something. What, am I tripping? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know how else to, to, to look at the rationale, man. You cannot lose and you proceed to not leave yourself with enough to win. What, are you trying to lose? Do you even want to make the playoffs? Or do you want to feel as if what you've done wasn't enough? Want to fail. You know what I mean? And I tell you, man, if this comes down to the Lakers sabotaging their own situation so they can have an excuse to get rid of people that they want to get rid of, that is a psychological thing that is not real, Lakers. You can get rid of whoever you want to. You don't need a good reason to. Don't let the media coerce you into making the mistakes you don't want to make because you want to move on from an error. Just move on from the error. I'd be god dang if somebody tell me I can't move on from something I don't want. I don't care if it works. I don't want it. It's gone. You know what I mean? Now, whether or not my rationale for not wanting it anymore makes any sense or not is irrelevant. This is my organization, and I have a right to move on. So I think the Lakers might be dealing with a little bit of that. It's like she want to move on from LeBron and AD, but she don't want everybody to know she want to move on from LeBron and AD. So she's doing all kinds of stuff to give her the excuse to say, oh, they weren't good enough so she can move on from LeBron and AD. That also makes sense. And I've had that theory in my head all year long that they be trying to lose on purpose so they can say this core ain't good enough. But that is not necessary. <laughs> it's not necessary. It makes you look worse. Not anyone else. It just makes it look as if your decision making and your assessment isn't right. Just like telling everybody you don't want Kyrie Irving. Oh, your assessment is terrible. What you're doing makes no sense. It doesn't help you. You're pricing D'Angelo sky high <laughs> by doing that. But at least you make Kyrie feel bad. Maybe he had a bad day today. I guess that worked it out. Stupidity, man. <laughs> Dumb stuff. And our team suffers for it. So we're going to run these people out of town, man. If this is the last thing we do, we're running people out of town. If they ain't about winning, they're going to get shunned on this channel every day, just like they have been for the last two years. I don't play with people, man. I don't play with them when it comes to my team. This team's deeper than what the, the people in place right now. I rooted for the Lakers when I was nine years old. <laughs> nine years old. So you think at 39, I'm going to take some crap from these people and they ain't going to help us win? They're going to neglect the, the, the balance of, of putting our players in a position to be healthy by having players next to them that can help them so they don't have people leaning on them and breaking their back? I can't tell you how angry I was to see that last night. I was so happy D'Angelo Russell was able to slip out from under that damn thing. What the hell was he leaning on him for like that? I want people to go back and look at that. That is over the back if I've ever seen it. And it's the Lakers' fault for not having somebody else bigger than D'Lo box that man out. So I ain't going to shake that. I'm not letting that go. I see that as a risk to a player like D'Lo's health when he has to be in that situation. And I want us to see the correlation between us claiming to want to be helpful to, to Anthony Davis's health by not playing him in a game when he doesn't hurt. I want that part to be so very clear to everybody who watches it. Because we're neglecting one aspect of what we're doing in the name of what it is that we're saying we're doing on the, in the other end of it. It's just like I said in regards to everything else that the Lakers are doing with the roster. You're going to leave yourself with no rim protection and tell everybody they got to play hard. Oh, we, do, we just didn't go out and play hard enough. You know, we need our guys to step up. What, the, what do you talk about step up? They need a step ladder to be tall enough to guard the people in front of them. What talking about? Nonsense. That's your fault. Ain't theirs. Video 44. I thank you all for watching.